It's that time of year to cozy up, throw on a pair of flannel pajama pants, and enjoy the cooler weather. I'm Jan Howell. Welcome back to my channel. In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to make pajama pants for the little ones. But in this sewing tutorial today, I'm going to show you how to make an adult pair of pajama pants with pockets. Now, I know adding pockets can seem a little tricky, but it's really easy. And once you learn how to do it, you can use this technique and use it to put pockets in skirts and other pants that you'll make. Not only are you going to learn how to put a pocket in a pair of pants, but I will show you how to sew an elastic waistband, how to hem a pair of pants, and I'm going to show you how to lengthen or shorten your pattern if you need to. And as always, I'm going to show you some great sewing tips on how to make sewing a little less stressful, and I may even show you some tips that will save you some time. Let's get started. Let's go over the materials and items that you'll need for this project. You'll need a pattern. There are lots of resources where you can get even a free pattern. You can get the pattern for smaller sizes on my website. You'll need your fabric. You'll need one inch knit elastic, pins, fabric scissors, and you can use a rotary cutter if you want. You'll need an iron, an ironing board, a sewing machine, You'll either need a seam gauge, or I love using this hot hammer, which will make the pressing your hems so much easier as you will see in this tutorial. And I'll put the links to some of these supplies in the description below. If you have a pattern that has multiple sizes like this one does, I recommend tracing the sizes onto a piece of tracing paper. This is tracing Pellon that's made for pattern, which I really love or you can just use regular parchment paper. Even though I'm using the largest size, you think, well, I can just tr cut it out and then use the smaller sizes. But as you can see on this crotch part, if I cut out the large, I'm going to miss the smaller sizes, which is would be cut off. It does take a little bit of, it takes just a little bit of extra time to trace your patterns, but it is well worth it in the long run. So I have traced this large size and that is the one I'm going to make. Then you'll always have the original pattern if you need to refer back to it and cut out a smaller size. Let's talk just a minute about fabric. So these bigger sizes are going to require a little bit more fabric. This size that I'm making, this adult small size, takes about two and a half yards. And if you're using a plaid fabric, you do want your pieces to line up, which can be a little tricky. So I wanted to go over this. Now, if I were using just some print that wasn't directional or didn't have a nap to it, you could just make sure that your pieces are following the grain and place it on the fabric wherever and not have to worry about lining up these lines. But if you do have these lines, you don't want them crooked and you do want to match them up on your side seam. It will take a little bit longer to cut out because you're not going to be cutting two at a time out. You're going to be cutting one at a time out. I'm going to open it up to a single layer. You'll want to line up the fabric grain line on your pattern with the selvaged edge, which would be straight and on grain. I'm going to maximize my fabric, bring it as close to the edge, and to make sure that grain line is straight, I'm going to measure from the grain line to the edge of the fabric. So I'll put one pin there, then I'll go down to the end grain line, and it needs to come this way quite a bit. And that's where I put my pin. This size is too long for the person that I'm making these for. So I need to shorten the length. You think that you could just cut off at the end and make that shorter. But as you can see, the pant leg is at a diagonal. So if I were to just cut it off and not have this little notched out area for my hem, it would not be as wide and you're gonna have a bunching up when you hem it. All your pants patterns, skirt patterns and things will have a lengthen or shorten line pretty much in the halfway point of your pattern. So this double line here is to lengthen or shorten. And I need to shorten it. 
So the inseam for the person that I'm making these for is 23 and a half inches. So I, as I measure here, this is 31 inches. That would be way too long for him. So I'm going to have to shorten it. And I'll want to make that an inch longer just so we can have some wiggle room as he grows. So I'm going to take it down to 24 inches and then I'm going to add an inch and a half, which would make that 25 and a half. That makes it so I need to take out about five inches. So I'm going to take that lengthen or shorten line and fold it on the line and bring it up two and a half inches. So right about there and I want to make sure that that is straight on the bottom. This needs to come up just a little bit and then I'll pin that in place. You're probably wondering what's going to happen because this pattern is all ski wampus right here. All you'll do is angle it up like that, like so on this side. If you needed to lengthen that, let me show you on the other pattern piece. Say this pattern wasn't long enough. So we, you would come to that lengthen or shorten line, cut it, and then spread the pattern apart the same distance. So what if I needed to add just two inches? This would be cut. I would spread it apart two inches. So there'd be, there'd be a gap between these two pieces, but right here, and then I would just angle that. So you would just cut a continuous line, but your pattern would be spread apart and that works. So I hope that makes sense and it's very doable. That's what I love about this Pellon tracing paper is you really don't have to put a ton of pins in. It kind of stays put so that you can cut it out. So I'm gonna cut one of these out and then I'll cut another one out so this is a large cutting mat that I have under here. You wouldn't want to just cut this out using a rotary cutter on a regular table. All right, so right here, I'm gonna cut out my little notch there. So whenever you have a notch that looks like this and it's cut inward, you don't wanna cut it inward. You want to cut it outward like that. See how I'm just angling that off right there. So on the hem, just so you can see it, it doesn't just go straight. It angles off the other way, that inch and a half that we're going to fold for the hem. All right, there's this side. And I wouldn't want to just pull it over there and cut another one this direction. They need to be mirror imaged. So I'm going to flip it this direction. Now something to note about directional fabric like this piece right here. See how the cats are all facing the same direction. If I were to lay out a front piece like this to cut the second piece, if I were to flip it like this down there, then it the cat, obviously one leg is going to be upside down. So you're going to want to keep that in mind when you are cutting out your pajama pants. The top needs to stay on the top. A lot of times people will, a lot of times you can flip the pattern like this and like this to save fabric, but not when it's a directional print going to note where, see this crotch point, where it is on the plaid. And I'm also going to look at this notch. And it's kind of in the middle to the top end of that green plaid. So it's kind of easy because I'm right next to it. I'm going to put that there and let's see that crotch point is just above. So that should line up. And you can also just flip that pattern over and cut around that, which I could have done, but I wanted you to see how to do it. All right, and we'll cut that second one out. Now I'm gonna use this portion to cut out my pocket. It doesn't have to really match because it's going to be on the inside and I need four of these. You can just line it up easily with that, the end of the print.
Okay, we'll set those aside. We'll cut out the back piece the same way. So I've shortened the pattern. Now we're ready to cut out two back pieces. You want to line up either the dart here or the crotch point with the front piece. So the first thing that we're going to do is pre-press our waistband and our hem. This tip just makes pressing the hem so much easier now than later and you'll see that in just a minute. And I love this hot hammer, makes the process so much easier. I'm gonna fold that over a quarter inch and press all the way across. Then I'm going to fold it again another inch and a quarter and press it. And I'll do that same thing with the other tops. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom hem. And we have that little notched area and that's where the, fine, the second pressing will be. So let's see how that works out. The quarter inch. And then we'll press another inch. We're going to sew the inner leg seam next. So line up your darts and make sure that that is lining up all the way down. I'll grab the other back piece, the front piece, put them right sides together. We'll sew starting at the bottom up to the top. On this particular pattern, the seam allowance is 5 eighths, which is a lot bigger than I usually do on my patterns, but you'll want to make sure that you're following the seam allowance that comes with the pattern. Otherwise, you'll get a different, you'll end up with a different size and fit that you wanted. So open it up and that is what it will look like. We're going to place right sides together and sew the crotch seam. Line up, pin it in place. Now I'm just going to show you, if I were to use the regular sewing machine, there's my seam. You will want to, at this point, open up the seam allowance and press that before you sew the crotch seam. So all of your seams you'll want to press open like this. And if I had that seam like this, I would open that up and make sure that they're lined up. Open up that pressed edge that we just pressed. I know you think that you may think that that's crazy that we already that we press that, but it will come in handy in just a minute. And our plaid's lining up real nicely, which is a good thing. And we'll start at this point and sew all the way around. If you're using a sewing machine, make sure you're back stitching at the beginning and the end of the seam. It may seem a little confusing, but what we're going to do is bring these two top pieces together and give it a shake. And then it will look more like pants. See, it's starting to come together. If you were using the regular sewing machine, at this point you'll want to press your seam allowance open. And now it's time to put the pockets in place. A pocket piece right side together lining up those notches and pin it in place and we're going to sew just a, using a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down here and I'm just going to use a regular sewing machine for this part we'll take it to the sewing machine sew that seam back stitching at the beginning and the end of your seam. I know I've already sewn that seam. I forgot to hit record, so let me just show you what that would look like. And you'll do that for all four pocket pieces. Take the iron and press the seam towards the pocket.
Now we're going to place the pockets right sides together. So I have pinned around the pocket and all the way down the leg. And I just want to, you just want to double check on those plaid points the st or stripes if you have stripes that they're lining up and they are. I'm going to grab my pattern, lay it on top, lining up the edge of the pattern. And then I'm going to find these pocket stop points. You can use a erasable pen or a disappearing ink pen. Mark that so you know where to stop. All right, we're going to take it to the regular sewing machine using the 5 8 inch seam allowance or your seam allowance and come down and sew to that stopping point. Don't sew this top piece yet. Sew around the pocket up to this stopping point, 5 8 inch in and then sew down the leg. So here and then around here and then down. Now here's a little tip. Sometimes it's hard to see where that 5 8 inch seam allowance is. I usually use 3 8 which is on the edge of my presser foot which is a lot easier to sew and keep in alignment. But just take a piece of masking tape or painter's tape and locate that 5 8 inch place and just put a piece of tape there. Then when I'm sewing my seams I can keep that edge lined up with the edge of the tape. Just makes it a lot easier. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning. I'm going to sew down to that stopping mark that I made. And back stitch. I'm going to stop there and come up to the this point of the pocket. Now I'm going to sew around that curve, make sure this is flat. I'm going to sew to 5 eighths. Leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot pivot. And see how that's on the 5 eighths. We'll sew all the way down to the bottom of the pants. come to that little little angle point where the hem is. Leave my needle down, pivot it a little bit. Make sure those are unfolded. And don't worry if it's a little off. We'll work that out in just a minute. So you can see what that looks like. Do that for the other side. We need to clip this section right here. So I'm going to, right at the edge of that pocket, right there, clip just about to the seam allowance, but not into the seam allowance, so that we can open that up. Do that for both sides. Need to do the same thing right here on the top of the pocket. So cutting into that seam so that we can open up that seam allowance. Before I do anything else, I'm going to trim down that seam allowance a little bit. Now you can use pinking shears, which will help keep it from fraying, or you can just cut it with regular scissors and then reinforce that around that edge with a zigzag stitch. You, when you're using pinking shears, you don't want to cut off too much. There, that's going to take away a lot of bulk around that pocket. You need to locate and find out which is the front and back of the pajama pants. A way to do that is the front 
is always going to be shorter, and this is a little bit shorter here in the crotch. Sometimes it's more distinct. And see how this is lower in the front than the back. I'm going to take the pocket now and flip it to the front side. We're going to open up that seam and fold it over until it matches the center of that seam and press it in place. Just open your seam allowance there. Do that with the other side. So the next thing that we are going to do is baste the pocket to the front piece just across the top here. So I have pinned it in place just through the front layer and then I'll go to the sewing machine and baste using a long stitch the length at four. And there's no need to back stitch. Okay, now we get to do the waistband. If you need to repress on these seams, which I'm going to do, folding it under a quarter inch right there at the seam, and then another inch and a quarter, just to match up with what we did before. When we fold that over, when we fold the casing over, it encloses that top piece of pocket. Now you may need to tweak it a little bit and make sure that it's that inch and a quarter for our casing. You may need to repress it in a few places, especially on those seams. I'm gonna pin that in place all the way around. So on the casing, we need to leave about an inch and a half unsewn right at the back seam so that we can thread our elastic through. So I'm gonna just eyeball about an inch and a half and double pin just so that gives me heads up that I'm, especially, so if I sew starting here, I'll go all the way around and then stop here. I'm gonna turn it right side facing out. Find that back center point. We're gonna top stitch just along, just barely inside that bottom fold, all the way around to make a casing. I have changed my stitch back to a straight stitch, two and a half in length, and I'm gonna start right there at those double pins. I'll put my presser foot down, remove the pins. The key to get that thread from bunching up on the bottom side is to grab that thread and hold it off to the right for the first couple stitches, and then you won't have that bobbin thread bunching up underneath. So it's really important when, when you're top stitching. So it doesn't affect it functionally, but it looks a lot better. You bring your needle down to make sure it's where you want it to be. Take a, hold the threads, take a few stitches, and then you can let go of that thread. Stitch just on the inside all the way around. Here's my double pins. Stitch up close, closer to them. Pull the, pull the pins out. And back stitch. All right. Now we're going to grab our elastic. I'm using one inch knit elastic. Before we add the elastic in, I'm gonna remove that basting stitch that we placed on the pocket and it should be really easy to pull out. You can use your seam ripper or you can just grab a pin and grab that thread and see how easy that pulls out. Do that with the other side. So this is a good example of what the thread will do if you don't hold the thread. Can you see that? It doesn't look real great for top stitching, but this wasn't, this was just basting, but something to remember. And the person that I'm making this for has a 34 and a half waist. So I'm going to subtract two inches from that and cut my elastic to 32 and a half. Grab a safety pin and insert it into the end of your elastic. We're gonna find that hole that we left, insert the elastic in and just start threading it through. So 
So when I get about three quarters of the way through, I like to pin <laughs> my the other end so it doesn't pull through. Because if that pulls through, you gotta start all over. If you need some instruction on how to tell what kind of elastic is what, so this is knit elastic. There's braided elastic, there's all kinds of elastics. I have a tutorial showing you how to determine the difference between elastic and there is a big difference. And knit elastic works really well for waistbands and things like this. And I have a free PDF guide sheet that shows you the characteristics of each elastic and what you do with those types of elastic, which really comes in handy. You can take it to the store and it even has pictures of what they look like. And you want to make sure that the elastic isn't twisted. It started to get a little twisted right there and I'm going to show you a little trick to keep that from twisting as you wash it and wear it. I'm just going to poke it back out that hole that we started. You can take your safety pin off and bring the ends together. You've overlapped your elastic by a half inch and you can use a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch. I'm just going to make a little box here or you can just sew two straight lines using a, a regular straight stitch as well. I, I like using a zigzag stitch so I'm going to place that underneath and this would be inside my casing but I wanted to show you exactly how to do that. So pretty simple, just some way to keep that together. You can use a straight stitch if you wanted to, like I said. Now I need to sew that opening closed, fold that one quarter to three eighths inch fold that we pressed before under, kind of pull it, center that seam, pin it in place. I'm going to find that place where I ended the stitching. Bring my presser foot down, bring my needle down to make sure it's right on that stitching and alignment. I'm going to hold my bobbin thread, take a few stitches, and then back stitch. And you can see how that's gathering. Grab behind the presser foot and in front and pull. And just hold that while you sew. Now here's the tip and the trick keeping the elastic from rolling is to get your elastic all even, pull it all out, and then go to that back seam where we just closed it off and I'm going to stitch in the ditch of that seam right there. Through the elastic, through the front piece, and you won't even see it. So I'm gonna bring my needle down, hold my threads, Now before I hem my pants, I'm going to turn the wrong side facing out again and take care of this side seam. Because I didn't use the serger, you're going to need to finish off those cut edges or use your pinking shears to cut down that side. And you can also use that zigzag stitch, open up the seam allowance, and then zigzag each edge. I prefer just to go to the serger. I'm going to start up here and serge down that seam. So most of the time the the plaid's matching up but the ends aren't quite. There's just a little bit even uh, like an eighth of an inch longer so just take your scissors and even that out and repress that quarter inch fold. Looks like
looks like that edge is good. And that's okay, on long seams sometimes that happens. So I don't get all frustrated, but at least those plaids are lining up. So I finished off that outer seam. I had to repress on the seam and then I'm ready. I've turned it right side facing out so I can sew inside that loop all the way around. The same way we did the waistband, except we don't have to leave a hole. We'll do the same thing on the other side and then you're good to go. You want to add a fake drawstring in the front or a faux tie. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to use this cute striped upcycled t-shirt yarn or you can use cording or other rostering type material. I find that 21 inches is a good length. All you do is fold it in half, find the midpoint and place it right on that center front seam and in the middle of the waistband like we did in the back stitch in the ditch across that and then tie a bow. If you're interested in making your own t-shirt yarn I have a tutorial showing you how easy and how fun that is. It really does come in handy for so many projects and I will put the link in the description below. So there you have a pair of pajama pants with pockets. So that's all there is to it. I hope this tutorial was helpful and that you're ready now to put some pockets in your pajama pants. Grab some fabric, make up a pair or two for yourself and your family. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out that other pajama pant tutorial. If you have a question or a great tip to put in the comments below, be sure you do that. And if you wanna be notified when I put new videos up, make sure you're clicking on the bell so that you can turn on your notifications. Have an awesome day and we'll see you next time. Music